can Trubisky stay at the top of this depth chart this season? For me, it's protecting the football. Yep. When you look at winning football games, it comes down to the turnover battle. If you're able to possess the ball and then on defense take it away, it leads to winning. And I want to look at the Pittsburgh Steelers last year, their turnover, their turnover differential. And you'll see when they're winning it, seven and three. Even, even, even with that defense still two and zero. Oh. When they're below. Mm -hmm. Zero, five, and one. Wow. It comes down to protecting the football. And we already said it. The Steelers, the focal point will be this defense. You guys know what sudden change is when we talk about sudden uh, change on the football. Got to grab the helmet and get out there. When you're a great defense and you've been out there, you're forcing three and outs, you're forcing turnovers, a long drive, you're forcing to kick a field goal, the kick goes wide right, you get to the bench, you're high five and good job, you're looking at your surface, you're going over what just happened, and you're sudden change, yeah. sudden change. For a defense, it's crazy. Now you got to run back on the field, you're tired, the big guys, Cam Hayward's over, he's pissed off, yeah. Mr. Trubisky <laughs> won't keep the ball. Yeah. If he's able to possess the ball, not turn it over, it'll go a long way. He'll win the locker room over, and he will remain the starting quarterback. It's so huge, and I think that's the key. You mentioned Cam Hayward. I would think T.J. Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick. I would go to some of the veterans uh, on the offense as well. You have to earn the veterans' trust because once the veterans start doubting you, then we'll know. The one thing that was going on throughout this quarterback competition is everyone in the media, we were all talking about pick it, pick it, pick it, but – Inside the locker room, if you listen to the, what the sound bites were, it was like, oh, Mitch is playing great. So the veterans believe in Mitch Trubisky. That's going to be the key. Once he loses the veterans and that becomes a debate where it's, hey, the young guy should really get an opportunity to play. He's out playing him in practice every day. That's when he's going to lose this gig. Um, winning games is obviously paramount. The turnover battle, Jason, is in the weeds and very paramount. To me, the third thing is just the, the, the trust of the players because mm. – if there's a moment where Trubisky can't get the job done in a big spot, or Trubisky, there's another shiny object in the room, and those players are veterans. Like, Cam Hayward doesn't know an NFL where he doesn't make the playoffs, right? Like, T.J. Watt doesn't know an NFL where he's not a perennial defensive player of the year and a guy playing in January. If Trubisky's costing them games or not getting the job done, those veterans will turn and those veterans will know, hey, it's time to tell coach, we'd like to see the young guy. Yeah, I think that's insightful. I think that on the more superficial level, Mr. Trubisky just needs to be pretty good. Just, just be Mitch Trubisky and be what you've done before. I think there's a really interesting similarity between this season for the Steelers and the 2018 season for the Chicago Bears in which Mitch Trubisky and the Bears won the North. This team, if you remember, this was a defensive team in which Mitch was just pretty good. He had about, you know, 24 touchdowns, 12 picks. Khalil Mack and Eddie Jackson would wreck shop just like TJ will and Minka will this year. It was pounded with Jordan Howard, just like it's gonna be pounded with Najee. There weren't a lot of, there was a few, but there weren't a lot of moments this year where it was like, all right, Mitch, you're down four to the Packers. There's 90 seconds left. It's all you. The team was so good around him and so well supported. I think he can just be pretty good, and he knows how to be pretty good. But here's the headline. You talked about the quick change thing. You can't lose the game for the team, can't have the terrible interception. Um, the worst thing that Trubisky could do is, like, throw a huge pick six against the Bengals or something. This is an astounding fact. Everybody listen to this. In the last 72 years, there have been 200 quarterbacks in the NFL to start 50-plus games, okay? 50-plus mm -hmm. games, 200 guys have been in the last 72 years. Out of those 200 guys, the only one who has not thrown a pick six is Mitch Trubisky. The only one ever. Let that sink in. He's never thrown a pick six, which is the worst thing you do as quarterback. He's one of only two, out of 200 guys in the last 70 years to play who has 50, never done it. To 50, play games. 50 games. A lot of games. Meaning he wow. doesn't make the terrible backbreaking mistake. And I looked it up. He only has two tackles. He doesn't have like 12. <laughs> it's just a fascinating thing about Trubisky wow. because I think throwing a pick six is the kind of thing we'll get him benched. You threw a pick six in the fourth quarter and we lost to the Ravens. Get out. He has never done it in his career. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think he doesn't make the terrible mistake. I think he knows how to punt. I think he knows how to run. And I think that'll help him. So, I mean, take that and say it at your water cooler. That is a fact. He's never thrown one, and that's unbelievably rare. That is fascinating. Pretty cool. Fascinating. Good job, Mitch. Yeah. Risque and Mitch Trubisky don't really go hand-in-hand no. hand when mm -hmm. it comes to quarterback play, um, which I think means that for the month of September for the Pittsburgh Steelers to settle in, um, they have to win. He has to win. He has to guide them, lead them, whatever he has to do. He has to be the name, the starting quarterback on the sheet to go 3-1 and one in the month of September. It's doable. I think the only ten 
tenuous opponent in that is week one against the Bengals. If he even loses that game and bounces back and ends three and one on the month, that is convincing. What I find more fascinating is how this news emerged yesterday and the fact that <laughs> Mike Tomlin chose to not list the guy who we have been up in arms about could he start in Kenny Pickett even on the number two Mason spot. Mason Rudolph was yeah. two. Ian Rappaport tweeted this out yesterday, and Mr. Trubisky's name was circled at the top. There it is, Mr. Trubisky. Mm -hmm. And then the second quarterback that would have been listed there is Mason Rudolph. I find that fascinating, and, I, and again, to come back to whatever Mike Tomlin does, I think is very intentional and purposeful. What is going on there? Have we all been talking too much about Kenny Pickett? Mm -hmm. He has walked those hallways since Pittsburgh. He definitely has a swagger about him. But is it too much for Mike Tomlin? And he's just saying, listen yeah. here. We want to go with the guy that makes the right Mitch decisions. And you have to learn. And we're going to give you the month of September to learn. And then we will see. Yeah, and that's the thing. The backup quarterback on the depth chart, it doesn't matter. We never know unless a starter gets hurt. They can right. list whoever they want. If Mitch stays in there, we don't know if Mason Rudolph's mm -hmm. really the backup mm -hmm. or if Kenny Pickett's really the backup until something happens to the starter. So it yeah. doesn't matter. Put it in whatever order you want. Absolutely. Well, Mitch Trubisky, you're the guy.